This is the record-breaking reaction. It is more than 150 million degrees centigrade. Ten times hotter than the heart of the sun. And it happened here, the world's most powerful fusion plant, Jet Fusion, in Cullum in Oxfordshire. It is, say the team here, a landmark for this technology. In January 2025, CERN's name lit up headlines. Not for smashing particles, but for data hinting at Planet Nine. Though CERN didn't find the planet, a reanalysis of NASA's own sky surveys now challenges their stance. The contradiction isn't in space, it's in how science chooses to speak or stay silent. CERN just released their Planet Nine data. It contradicts everything NASA said. In January 2025, headlines exploded. CERN had confirmed Planet Nine. It sounded impossible. CERN doesn't observe space. It studies particle collisions underground. So how could they find a planet? They didn't. The real breakthrough came from a team in Taiwan led by Dr. Lin Wei at Academia Seneca. They revisited old sky scans from NASA's IRAS, 1983, and Japan's Akari, 2006 to 2011, missions. These infrared surveys are ideal for detecting cold, distant objects. By applying modern motion tracking algorithms, the team found slow-moving signals buried in the data. These weren't fast asteroids. They moved sluggishly, just like a planet on the solar system's edge. NASA had already archived and moved on from this data, but Lin's team found what others missed. And because they published through a CERN-hosted archive, the internet exploded with the wrong idea. We didn't find a planet, Lin said. We found a question worth asking. If Planet Nine is real, why did NASA deny it? NASA never denied Planet Nine's existence, but they also never confirmed it. And in science, what you don't say can be just as powerful as what you do. The idea of Planet Nine took root in 2016, when astronomers Mike Brown and Konstantin Batygin noticed something odd in the outer solar system. A group of icy bodies, small, distant, and far beyond Neptune, were behaving strangely. Their orbits were clustered, tilted in the same direction, as if something massive was tugging on them from the dark. They ran the numbers. The most elegant solution? A hidden planet, roughly five to ten times the mass of Earth, orbiting far beyond Pluto. The media jumped on it. The public wanted it to be true, but NASA held its ground. Their reasoning was simple. A planet must be seen, not just predicted. It must be tracked across the sky, and its orbit confirmed through repeated observation. The evidence so far, they said, was compelling, but incomplete. That standard remains. And it's why, even after the Taiwan team's findings in 2025, NASA still hasn't changed its position. Their silence isn't necessarily rejection, it's procedure. But to many astronomers, the case for Planet Nine is getting stronger. The Taiwan team's signals from re-examined infrared surveys line up almost too well with predictions. And yet, NASA still won't comment directly. Candidates aren't confirmations, said Jennifer Lopez, a planetary scientist at NASA. They're just maybes. But the media doesn't speak in maybes. And when NASA offers caution while others suggest discovery, that gap feels like denial. Not because the science isn't sound, but because the language doesn't translate. And that's how misunderstandings begin. Not in the facts, but in the space between them. The Planet Nine. Clue hidden in NASA's own archives. No new rocket was launched. No new telescope turned its lens to the stars. Instead, the clue came from something NASA already had. Back in 1983, the infrared astronomical satellite, IRAS, scanned the entire sky in infrared wavelengths, capturing heat signatures from cold, distant objects the human eye could never see. Then, in 2006, Japan's Akari mission did the same this time with improved resolution and sensitivity. Separated by 23 years, these two missions gave astronomers a rare opportunity, a before and after of the entire sky. Enough time, potentially, to catch an object slowly drifting through the deep. And that's what the Taiwan team did. They aligned the IRIS and AKARI datasets using new motion detection algorithms, optimized to spot tiny displacements across decades. They weren't searching for flares or flashes. 
They were hunting for the slowest possible motion, a steady crawl against a sea of static stars. And they found one, a faint object showing arc second level drift, barely perceptible, but precisely in line with what Planet Nine models had predicted years earlier. We didn't build a better eye, said Dr. Lin Wei, who led the study. We just opened the old one wider. This wasn't a discovery in the traditional sense. It was a reinterpretation, a realization that something overlooked might now be important. The contradiction here isn't about conflicting evidence. It's about how the same data can speak differently when asked a new question. And sometimes, the most groundbreaking insights don't come from new technology, but from seeing the old world through a new lens. CERN didn't build the telescope, but the data went nuclear. CERN didn't take the images. They didn't scan the skies or track a drifting object in the void. Their detectors study quarks, not quasars. But in the chaos of headlines and social media feeds, that distinction disappeared. Here's what really happened. The Taiwan team released their Planet 9 analysis through Zenodo, a CERN-hosted open access archive used by scientists worldwide. It was simply a platform, neutral, passive, technical. But to the public, CERN's name meant authority. And that was enough to explode the story beyond its scientific scope. The team's actual finding was tiny, a motion of less than one arc second per year. So small, it's like watching a grain of rice move across a football field from the other end of a city. But size doesn't equal insignificance. By applying motion filters, analyzing brightness curves, and cutting out background noise, the team isolated a handful of promising objects. One stood out, IRA 09230492 It didn't flash, it didn't streak, but it moved, just a little, and in exactly the way a far out planet like Planet 9 should. It fit the predictions, speed, position, temperature. It was faint, distant, and persistent. But it wasn't a photo, it wasn't a confirmed orbit, it was a signal. Still, that didn't stop the internet. Headlines went nuclear, CERN finds hidden planet, CERN contradicts NASA. But the data never said that. It was public interpretation, not scientific declaration, that created the conflict. It's not what CERN saw, said astronomer Lucia Ferris. It's what people thought they saw. What began as a quiet paper became a firestorm because the story was easier to tell than the science. Coordinates versus confirmation, the Planet Nine candidates. The Taiwan team ran their algorithm against hundreds of thousands of objects scattered across decades of infrared sky scans. Most showed nothing, but a few, very few, moved just the right way. The clearest of them was again IRA 09230492.8. Its movement matched the expected arc second drift. Its brightness was consistent with a cold, distant planet reflecting minimal light. Its position aligned with models that suggest where Planet 9 could be hiding, far beyond Pluto, at the edge of the solar system's reach. But here's the catch. Matching a model isn't discovery. To confirm an object as a planet, NASA demands more. You need a repeat detection. You need to measure its path, build its orbit, confirm its presence across time. That hasn't happened. Not yet. So far, what we have is a set of coordinates, a direction in the sky, a suggestion, it's public. Any observatory can follow up. But as of now, no one has. Not NASA, not Rubin, not Subaru. The skies remain still. If it moves like Planet Nine, said Dr. Lin, we need to check again. But no one is. And that's where the contradiction begins. Not in the data, but in the quiet that followed. The silence is louder than any signal. The hesitation to follow up, to verify, to look again, that's the true uncertainty surrounding Planet Nine. Not whether it exists, but whether we're still willing to find it. NASA said no. Now, the numbers say maybe. NASA's official stance hasn't changed. There's no confirmed object in the sky that meets the criteria for Planet Nine. But that stance is starting to feel out of step with what the data is quietly suggesting. The Taiwan team's findings don't come from new telescopes. They come from NASA's own archives old missions once deemed finished. That's where the contradiction lies. It's not about who's right, but about who's willing to look again. 
Their most promising signal, IRA0923049288, shows a slow drift, dim brightness, and a sky position that align almost perfectly with what Planet Nine's models have predicted for years. If this signal were new, NASA might be excited, but because it comes from old data, the reaction has been muted. NASA hasn't responded to the coordinates, no press release, no statement of interest, just silence. And in science, silence can be loud. This isn't proof, Dr. Lin said, but it's also not nothing. Public pressure is growing. Independent astronomers are asking why the signal isn't being followed up. NASA says it needs more than one detection to build an orbit. But others argue, you won't get that second detection if you don't look. The numbers don't prove a planet, but they make it hard to keep pretending the sky is empty. What candidate really means and why headlines get it wrong. In scientific terms, a candidate is a possibility, a filtered signal that survives early cuts. But in the media, candidate becomes confirmed, and that's where everything goes sideways. The Taiwan team never said they found Planet Nine. They said they found matches, objects that move and shine the way we expect Planet Nine to. But that nuance got lost fast. Headlines ran with it. CERN confirms Planet Nine. NASA was wrong all along. In truth, neither claim is accurate, but they spread fast. NASA, for its part, refuses to call any of these signals a discovery. To them, using the word planet means the object has to be tracked, measured, and understood. It has to go through a process. That's not stubbornness, it's standards. But when people read about motion-matched signals, archived data, and radio silence from NASA, it doesn't feel procedural. It feels like rejection. There's no war here, said astronomer Lucia Ferris. There's just a vocabulary problem. What scientists call a candidate, the public often hears as proof. Planet Nine or Phantom, the science behind the suspicion. Not everyone agrees Planet Nine even exists. Some astronomers think the data can be explained by something else entirely. One theory points to a disk of icy debris, a massive collection of small objects skewing orbits without needing a planet. Others suggest background galaxies or instrumental noise, false signals that mimic real motion. And then there are the more extreme theories, a primordial black hole, or a rogue planet captured by our sun long ago. These are still fringe ideas, but the lack of direct evidence for Planet Nine keeps the door open. The Taiwan team's reanalysis doesn't confirm Planet Nine, but it makes the field narrower. It tells us where to look and what to look for. It filters the noise and brings us closer to a yes or no. This is how science works, said Dr. Lin. We take away the guesses until only one possibility remains. The danger is assuming we already know the answer. The risk is in believing the signal means more than it does, or less. Until another telescope sees the same object again, we live in uncertainty. A ghost planet caught only in shadows. Will telescopes settle the fight between CERN and NASA? The next move doesn't belong to NASA or to CERN. It belongs to the sky. And the sky, for once, might be ready to answer. The Vera C. Rubin Observatory, soon to begin full operations in the Chilean Andes, will scan the entire southern sky every night with unprecedented sensitivity. It was built to track the slow, faint movement of distant objects, precisely the kind of motion Planet Nine is expected to have. If the Taiwan team's coordinates are correct, Rubin should find it or rule it out. But Rubin isn't the only one watching. Other world-class observatories like Subaru in Hawaii, the Very Large Telescope, VLT, in Chile, and even the James Webb Space Telescope, JDEWST, are capable of following up. They just need a reason to point their mirrors in the right direction at the right moment. And now, they have one. The test is simple, but decisive. Does the same object appear again? Does it drift across the sky year over year, exactly as predicted by the models? If the answer is yes, NASA will be compelled to respond. A candidate would become a confirmed object. A hypothetical world would become real. But if no object appears, if the drift is never repeated, then the signal vanishes into the haze of instrumental noise, background galaxies, or cosmic coincidence. 
We only need one more look, said Dr. Lin Wei. That's how close we are. It's not decades away. It could be months. Right now, the race is between confirmation and confusion, between caution and curiosity, between turning a weak signal into a new chapter of planetary science or letting it dissolve in doubt, archived and forgotten like so many before it. But the weight of discovery doesn't just rest on telescopes. It rests on the will to follow through, on researchers and institutions choosing to risk a look, choosing not to wait for someone else to act. Because if no one checks, we don't just lose a planet, we lose a chance to know. And that's what this moment is, a pivot point, not between CERN and NASA, but between those who act and those who watch. In the vast quiet of space, we may soon hear an answer, but only if we're still listening. What survives, the data or the distortion? At the end of all this, CERN didn't contradict NASA. The data didn't declare war, but the story made it feel that way. A quiet scientific paper released through a CERN-affiliated archive became a lightning rod for public tension. The real story isn't about conflict, it's about communication and how fragile it becomes when science meets storytelling. What we've witnessed is a vocabulary clash where candidate became confirmed, coordinates became proof, and NASA's silence became denial. In reality, there is no villain here. NASA's method is conservative for good reason, protecting scientific credibility by avoiding premature claims. The Taiwan team's approach is exploratory, daring to look where others had stopped. One moves with caution, the other with curiosity. And that's how it should be. But when that balance breaks down in the public eye, distortion fills the silence. Algorithms turn nuance into virality. Headlines flatten complexity into confrontation. People want answers, not probabilities. But science traffics in uncertainty, and discovery is rarely loud. So what survives? The quiet, deliberate signals buried in decades-old archives, or the loud, simplified stories shared in millions of clicks? Right now, Planet Nine remains a ghost, seen only in drift patterns and digital traces, never in the eye of a telescope. It floats in the twilight between fiction and possibility. But this ghost has weight. It bends orbits. It challenges models. It lingers in the math. If even one of these flagged signals turns out to be real, NASA will have to rewrite its narrative. Not because they were wrong, but because they waited too long to look again. That's the heart of this contradiction. Not in the sky, not in the data, but in the tension between when we notice and what we believe. Science is not a single voice. It's a conversation, sometimes slow, sometimes messy. And in that noise, the truth risks being drowned out not by lies, but by impatience. In the end, what survives may not be who found Planet Nine, or who confirmed it first, but who chose to keep looking when others stopped. CERN didn't discover Planet Nine, but their platform gave voice to data NASA overlooked. The contradiction isn't a battle over planets, it's about perception, language, and timing. If even one signal is real, NASA must rethink its story. Until then, Planet Nine remains unconfirmed, drifting somewhere between mystery, math, and missed opportunities.